mission is to foster a positive, nurturing, and safe environment to inspire and support ongoing learning and the development of individuals as productive members of society. We must be able to conduct our meetings in an orderly fashion. Our expectation at all board meetings is that everyone conducts themselves civilly and respectfully. In the event anyone is disruptive and interferes with the meeting, they will be asked to leave. If they do not, we will request that law enforcement assist in the process. Roll call, please. Mr. Amsler? Here. Mr. Daffler? Here. Ms. Gettner? Here. Mr. Mowry? Mrs. Meese? Here. Mrs. McGowan? Here. Mrs. Ogleborn? Mr. Prince? Here. Ms. Stocker? Here. Dr. Blessing? Present. Mr. Holman? Here. All right, and before we adopt the agenda, are there any amendments? Okay. All right. So, C, approval of the adoption of the agenda for July 18, 2024. D, approval of waiving the reading of the following minutes as presented. Records Commission meeting held on June 27, 2024. Regular board meeting held on June 27, 2024. And then E, approval of minutes for the Records Commission meeting held on June 27, 2024. And the regular board meeting held on June 27, 2024. And F, approval of financial reports. And G, it is recommended that the Board of Education adopt resolutions of appreciation for the following employees. We have Chris House, Chris come on up. Um, she has 23 years in Minusburg City School District.
you want to do you want the students to speak I, on? Yeah, sounds like you know some of these students. I yeah. 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 Thanks, Chris. I totally forgot to read the resolution, okay. so Chris Amsler is going to read that. And before he does that, Madison, did you want to say something about Mrs. House? Uh, she was one of her students. Um, so Miss House came in as a long-term sub um, in Viking Prep when one of the teachers was on maternity leave. And that class got a whole lot more interesting um, with, with Miss House there. Um, it, it was definitely a change, but I think it was a very good change. And I'm very excited for you in this new freedom, I guess I should say. But <laughs> congratulations. Resolution of Appreciation. Whereas Chris House has rendered 23 years of service to the Minersburg City Schools, and whereas Chris House's performance, conduct, and sincerity in carrying out her duty has exemplified the highest level of achievement, and whereas Chris House has distinguished herself as a substitute teacher, intramural director, Minersburg Secondary Academy Dean of Students, and teacher in the Minersburg City School District, now therefore be it resolved that the Minersburg City School Board of Education pass this resolution as a token of its appreciation for her outstanding conduct and that such resolution become part of the permanent minutes of said Board of Education dated July 18th, 2024. Congratulations. I did ask her if she wanted to drive the bus, she said that. Oh, come on. <laughs> she could bring her gloves. You're welcome to stay, but you're welcome to go, and we can take you out to dinner for the sub stuff. Okay, oh yeah, well that's coming up soon, so stay tuned. Okay. All right, in H, it is recommended that the Board of Education approve meeting opening items C through G. I'll let Mr. Levin, speak first about the financial report. So last time we were here, we were finishing up the end of the fiscal year, and so we were able to get that data in now. Um, revenue ended up coming in a little higher than anticipated from an increase in state foundation, as well as interest earnings, um, and some refunds of the money that's held by the ESC for us. And so that's a good thing for the district. Everything else tracked pretty, pretty close to the forecast. Continues to look encouraging. Yeah. All right. Um, I have a motion. I move for the approval of meeting opening items C, Charlie, through G, Golf. Second. A first by Mr. Amsler, a second by Ms. Mrs. Getter. Roll call, please. Mr. Daffler? Yes. Mrs. Getter? Yes. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. I don't believe we have any public comments, correct? Okay. All right, we'll go on to our board discussion. We're just going to have a short preliminary discussion about substitute teacher pay. Um, we will follow up with a work session in August to dig deeper into the finances and to um, possibly support an increase. Um, I think there might be a slide. Is there a slide up? It shows you um, the pay for 26 districts in the area. Um, Minusburg currently pays 105 a day um, and is the lowest pay out of 26 
to 26 districts. Um, there is an outlier on there with Trotwood at 200, um, but that doesn't really take the average down much. Um, the average for all the districts <coughs> is $129.61 a day. And if you take Trotwood out, <coughs> it's still $127 a day. So um, I just was going to ask Dr. Blessing, Mr. Hellman, to maybe um, talk about our substitute teacher pool and any uh, cost savings that you foresee in the future. Well, obviously, just looking at the averages, you know, it makes sense that we would at least consider something in the $130 range as a raise for subs. And it, just based on that number alone, obviously, that's just a, you know, just what we kind of ballparked um, when we started doing our research. We looked at how it would impact our overall general fund, and we looked at some of the costs that are currently involved with subs and some things that we do um, foresee being some savings. Um, we had some of our, I don't know, it's, what's the next thing on there that they could say? Oh, um, the uh, class size payouts is something that we do um, pay our teachers for if they go over a certain amount of students, but with our elementary programming changes, uh, this past year we spent about 80, a little over 80,000 on that class size payout. Obviously, from a treasurer and financial standpoint, that's, that's the cost of maybe one teacher. But if we don't need that cost because our class sizes are balanced, um, we could foresee it for, for savings of probably close to 80,000, 75,000. I mean, obviously the middle school and high school had maybe $2,000 worth of payouts last year at the most. Um, so right now we're we're trending that we're not going to have that large of a payout. So that could be something to offset because I think Justin did did the um, cost of um, $130 a day, um, and that would be an increase of what would that increase be? Is that one of the slides? So, yeah. So then on the last sheet there. Yeah. So if we increased it from 105 to 130, and all. Use of subs was mirrored what it was this year, that it'd be about hundred forty two thousand dollar increase. So right there, if you're talking the savings of roughly eighty thousand, you're already down sixty two thousand. And obviously, when you talk about sub pool, um, right now our teachers do cover classes. So when we don't have enough subs, they cover classes. And um, uh, the payroll department, um, Pam Bell, was able to give us those figures as well. Um, and are they, are they on that? Or are they on the, the, sheet, the sheet I attached? Also, um, procured a grant this year for one of our um, human resources tools that we all have to take part of called Public School Works. And the state of Ohio gave districts money for training, such as Public School Works, and um, we received over $20,000. So that will pay for that software. So now, um, if, we're, if we're adding it up, we're about $100,000 in savings that we anticipate for this year. And then I will just kind of share with you just kind of what we have paid out in class size pay. like that savings for class coverage last year was around 34,000 so even if we could reduce that by 25% um, 50% that's going to put us closer just to the projected increase of if we went around 130 dollars um, and the uh, and Justin I think your figures when you calculated it that cost it would be not even a 1% increase to the to the general fund correct, correct. So in terms of if we want to, you know, have a have, you know, think about do we want to stay at 130? Do we want to try to get a little higher? Um, I, mean, I mean, I know we have the cost comparison on there. Obviously for us, I think for our area, a lot of our sub pools and Steve and I know Heather could share with us. You know, we're, we've got um, West Carrollton close by. We've got Centerville close by. Um, I don't know if we got Spring Girls information. We did. So you know, we if we want to be competitive with those folks. They're in the 125, uh, 120, um, and then West Carrollton's 115. 
But again, I don't know if they're having the same discussion we are right now. So I do plan to have a, um, just ask my area superintendents before the next meeting what they're thinking in terms of those steps. Because we know that some have raised theirs recently. So, because Mad, I'm not Mad River, but New Lebanon was at 110, and they raised theirs one. So that was a new addition. One ten to one thirty as well. Well, New Lebanon was one forty. But and, and, and we we've spoken with teachers. We've spoken with subs. I mean, I think that they all feel that um, that would be that would definitely offset some of the pressure that the, the teachers are feeling now when we can't fill the positions and other staff that have subs. Okay. Yeah, I guess the big thing. Would, I mean, does it does it would it make it easier to fill? fill these positions. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm thinking it would, and um, I do see Xenia on here. They have a, a little bit of extra money for somebody with an active teacher's license, so it might not be a bad idea to look at a, a scale of some sort. If you got a license, you get a little bit more, or, you know, I, I don't know. It's probably, it's probably good to have a, maybe a range. I don't know. But I'm sure there's other people that we want in the classroom that we don't have our teachers in. Yeah, and I know Chris, Chris, Chris will vouch, and Chris and I have had many conversations over the years. Um, we, we have lost a good amount of subs. Um, because of pay. Because of pay. Well, and I think it's, I think it has to be noted that we have had, I mean, I've been here now 10 years, 11 years, a long time. Um, and it wasn't too long ago we were at 85 and we've been having these discussions and we went to where we're at now at 105 um, and we technically and i'll say this out loud to some degree we put a band-aid on uh, a situation that because of finances uh, we were trying to be proactive but competitive uh, and it all boils down to having quality uh, teachers, um, subs in the classroom for the students to get ed to get educated, and I, I know Niall and I were just having this conversation and just looking at it, and it's we have to stay competitive. I mean, you do all of our hiring, you, and you know the core better than any of us. To, to stay competitive. So I'm I'm glad we're looking at it. I'm glad we're having a work session. Uh, and I'm glad that we're discussing it to get it resolved sooner rather than later. It made a difference when we did the classifieds a couple of years ago because we used the base scale of like, what was it, a step one with them to get in. And that helped tremendously. And so that's always something that we've got to keep in mind too as we look at this. You gotta kind of keep because your classified support is just as important as correct your certificate with with how the service is correct. So, but that helped tremendously. Yeah. And at that point, we were taking the the leader in the classifieds. So we actually were able to take some other people from mm -hmm. districts. So, but it is we we have lost um, some good subs and. Um, Every year we, they go to send it out. I mean, we had some that didn't turn back this year because they started even considering it. And so they're kind of waiting to see what happens. So. And especially based on what our neighbors are offering. Yeah, I don't know why you wouldn't do this for your brother. Mm -hmm. can. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Logical. I think it's important to, for our substitutes to understand that we value them. And when you're paying $105 a day, that doesn't feel like you're being valued when your next door neighbor's paying 120 or better. So I'm glad that I'm also glad that we're looking at this. I think this is really an urgent uh, situation that we need to move on as quickly as we can with once we have all the data that we have, need to make the decision. Yeah, and I, you know, I think we'll really dig deeper in August. Um, just I was, I know our teachers 
contract since they work seven and one fourth hours a day, and I calculated that out to be fourteen forty eight dollars an hour. And my granddaughter, who just turned seventeen, makes fifteen dollars and eighteen cents an hour at Target. Just to put things in perspective, um, and some say work hard. It, it's hard work. I, I mean, she folds clothes. I mean, not that not working at Target isn't important because we all love Target, but um, yeah, it's. You know, a comparison that I think, you know, makes it pretty evident that we need to do something. Totally different responsibilities you're indicating in folding <laughs> clothes and taking care of our children. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Any other discussion about that? Mr. Blevins, did you want to chime in at all? Okay. Student, any students, any thoughts? You, you probably had your... Um, experience of subs throughout the years. I'm sure, it makes a difference. Um, I kind of agree with maybe looking at um, a higher price for the teachers who do have an active license. Because um, for me, it I think that it really does make the difference between a teacher who or a sub who could answer a question and like give you that um, knowledge versus a teacher who's like, well, just go go look it up or um, something like that. So I think that would be something that. Yeah, or Andrea, anything? <laughs> um, I think, well, like looking back before COVID, I remember having a lot of subs, and now after COVID, I feel like it definitely went down a lot. So I think this is a really important discussion. And um, I agree with what Maddie said. I think it's important to make a little more for the teachers who, the subs who have teaching license. And I think that it's a good idea. It's a good thing that we're discussing. I have a uh, very close family friends who sub, and uh, they oftentimes tell me about it. And I know it's a very hard profession to do because they have to step into the role of a teacher, and all teachers are different. So I agree that this is something that is very important and should be acted upon now. And yeah, ditto to what they said because modifications could be made to this uh, new pay range and upgrades just to suit people with possibly higher certifications. And, you know, our work sessions are um, open to the public, so you're always welcome to those as well. Um, next we'll move on to our consent agenda. <clears throat> the recommended action, approve the memorandum of understanding with the Miamisburg classroom teachers. Regarding the proration of insurance. Okay. The proration of insurance waiver payments and authorize the payment and proration of insurance waiver payments to all non bargaining unit members and administrators pursuant to the same terms and conditions as in the MCTA Memorandum of Understanding. B. Board approval is recommended for the 24 25 bus routes and bus stops established by the supervisor of transportation. Resolution. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Minesburg City Schools hereby approves the 2425 bus routes and bus stops established by the Supervisor of Transportation and delegates authority to the Superintendent and Director of Business to make changes as needed during the 2425 school year. It is recommended that the Board of Ed Education approve the following resolution. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Minesburg City School District authorizes district participation in the federal funded Title I, Title IIA, Title III, Title IVA, IDEA Special Education, Early Childhood Special Education, IDEA, ESCE, Early Childhood Education, McKinney Vento, School Bus Purchase Program, Auxiliary Programs, and Stronger Connection Grant for the 24-25 school year and designate Amy Dobson, Sue Homan, Katie Lucas, Stacy Moore, Katrina Hilliard, Hillard, and Dr. Laura Blessing, administrators of the programs assigned 
and be it further resolved that the board of education encourages the participation of staff parents and other in their interested citizens and the development of these programs and i do know there's announcements that go out asking parents and the community to be involved and then in accordance with the board policy bhba it is recommended that the board of education approve the following request for training as offered by the ohio school boards association october 10th 24 ohio school board association southwest region fall conference november 10th through the 12th 2024 ohio school board association capital conference and then e it is recommended that the board of education approve consent items a through d and uh mr hellman did you want to talk about bus routes or and then yeah i we a couple things on here the the mou um on there so it's an in lieu of um, payment and so what we're trying to do is is to align it before there's no proration of the in lieu of in terms of that and so <clears throat> what would happen is if someone comes in in august let's say a new teacher they have the option of taking on the insurance or off the insurance it's much more economical for us to offer them the prorated per month in lieu of as opposed to the four defined dollar contribution for that amount per month and so um the in lieu of we the certificated and, and non-bargaining have that option of going off and on for in lieu of um classified with teachers they have a clause a grandfather clause in there so i looked at that and it's very limited um, who would go off no, no one would, no one will be coming on to in lieu of because there's a grandfather date does that make sense mm -hmm. so the similar you wouldn't apply for them does that make sense so that's that's the difference between those on there bus routes we always have to have board approval for bus routes each year so that's our obligation to do that parents are calling wanting to know where the bus stop is so it's getting to be that time <laughs> and um steve i have a question about mm -hmm. the bus routes um on all the bus routes there were on not on every stop but on some of the stops to the right it some, said something about safety or safe stop or something like that There's can a, you explain that it's a place of safety so yeah that's what it said place of safety so on our revised code uh, part of the transportation guidelines is you have to establish a place of safety where to stand and um actually we have two drivers here with us today they're like don't tell us okay so it's where the students stand they know that that is a safe place to stand right. so they have addresses on there right they'll have addresses like a home address or a corner of a street and so really for the first couple weeks our drivers are really good about explaining to the kids you know you don't come up until my hand drops the door opens here's your safe place of safety is some of them might say dropping off to an elementary kid you know your place of safety is going to be the big rock at the corner of the driveway or your place of safety is going to be you wait at your light post until my bus pulls away and then you can leave so it's it's there, there are very specific rules about you just need to wait for a certain signal to, to get on the bus and, and to wait till the bus pulls away or to come in. So, but great, that, that explains. I, I didn't understand what that meant. And then in the memorandum of understanding with um, MCT, MCTA, um, that is based on their FTE, correct? So if yeah. they're part time, it's it's uh, prorated based on that. Correct. Okay. Dr. Blessing, do you want to talk about the federal and state funded programs? Sure. I mean, obviously, this is something that we do every year, and um, we are holding the, the public meeting, at the, as you read in the resolution, that we encourage participation. So we've had we held these meetings. I think um, Stacy shared with me they for 12 years, and we've never had any public participation. So it's always before a board meeting. So anyone is welcome to come, students, and hear about the different um, 
funding opportunities that we can receive uh, based on um, obviously the size, the type of our school, and the type of education we do offer. And those are why there's so many title, there's different title um, grants within that. And then some of them are state grants and some of them are federal. But they do really help us offset the general fund um, because we can use some of them, especially special ed education, um, for salaries, uh, which is over a million dollars that we, we save annually by being able to get that grant. So, And then we use um, some of our title money for funding as well, the ECE grant funding. Um, and then our, um, we do get a decent amount of funding for our um, school nutrition um, school program, and that helps with operations in general. September the September okay sorry All right. I was curious about how the timing and everything is going with the, the bus routing with, the, with the, all the changes is every everything smooth yeah I see you know as it could be yeah there's and remember there's no shuttling so it's some routes are going to be longer not to say longer but fewer students on the longer routes that go out more to the country does that make sense in terms of that um, but they're pretty, they're timed pretty well. I was very, very pleased, so good. And our technology department has worked with transportation and we're gonna be sharing a um, link that they can click on and type in their address so they know which schools services them. Especially if they're a new family, they can just type in Heineke Road and the, and the actual street name and it'll tell which schools they attend for their primary and immediate. Right, and, and it'll say if there's busing, Busing's in green, Bus walk zone is in red. It'll say yes and no. So it's, it's Mr. Lotz Bay did a great job. Yeah, great. And, and all the ladies at Transportation helped. He had to, to get a lot of their data entry. So we're going to be sending that out to the families next week so they can double check. And also for new families that start to move in. And even our community, we've had grandparents call and say, I don't know where my child, my grandchild's going to go, and this will be a tool. And then, of course, for our realtors in the area, when they are showing houses, to be able to share that with the new family. And it will have links to find out once you are a student how to get um, your bus stop information all right there within it. Yeah, so click on e-link and enter your ID. It's, it's pretty cool. We'll share it with everybody. So it's that, fun to play around with. Just so to Michelle see. and Kathy and Jean, um, we're all using the same spreadsheet database. So as soon as they change, so example, as houses start going into to run. And we start get, we can put that immediately and as soon as they update the spreadsheet it updates on the website. Oh, nice. Are we still thinking about I don't know. Are we still thinking about when two buses go to one neighborhood about putting some signs in those buses so that the kids don't get on the wrong bus? Yeah, we're <laughs> kinda of talking about the best way. We've we've talked to other districts and they're like like well we notice you have like I would say the animals on the bus. And they're like, well, it works for a while, and then when the temperature changes, the magnets fall off, and we lose the magnets. And so we're we're trying to figure out if that's going to be something like in a window, maybe. But then you have to be careful because you can't put things in windows. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're like, oh, we could try that. And they're like, yeah, the magnets work for a little period of time, but then they fall off. Well, and now the new design of the buses have a lot of the curved stuff. <laughs> It's like you can't find a flat area. To... I think most of the parents, too, make sure their kids get on the right bus, so it should be okay. <laughs> but yeah, I know there was some talk about that, and I just wondered. But okay. Um, anything else in that? Okay. So I have a motion. Um, is, do I have a motion? I move for the Board of Education to approve. Items A through D, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Second. Okay, so first by Mr. Daffler and a second by Mr. Amsler. And roll call, please. Ms. Getter? Yes. Ms. Neese? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mr. Daffler? Yes. All right, next we'll move to the human resource, human use resources agenda items, and we have A. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following personnel reports. Employment in the Minusburg City School Districts is contingent upon the candidate submitting to and passing a BCII and FBI criminal record check 
in accordance with Ohio Revised Code and pre-employment drug screening, screening in accordance with adopted board policies. Do I have a motion? I move that the Board of Education approve the following personal reports for certificated and classified. Second. Okay, so first by Mrs. Gunner and a second by Mr. Daffler. Mr. Hellman, did you want to say anything? I would say business as usual, but it, business seems to be picking up trying to get hires in and transfers and we're all, like we talked about, we're all bargaining for the same set of subs. We're all bargaining for the same set of teachers out there. Just, there's just been a large amount of retirements across um, Ohio and it's just, we're all fighting for the same people, so. All right, we'll go on to B. It is recommended that the Board of Education. Did we not have oh, roll call? Oh, yeah, sorry, because that was separate. Roll call, sorry. Ms. Neese? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mr. Daffler? Yes. Mrs. Getter? Yes. All right, B. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following personnel report supplemental, stipend, certificated, classified. And just the same clause. Do I have a motion? I move for the. Personnel report, supplemental stipend, certificated, and classified. Second. Okay, so first by Mr. Amsler, a second by Mrs. Gatter. Mr. Hellman, did you want to say anything about that? Same as before. Okay. All right, roll call then. Mrs. Neese? Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mr. Daffler? Yes. Mrs. Gatter? Yes. All right, we'll move on to agreements and contracts. It is, rec a, it is recommended by the superintendent to enter into a two-year agreement with Hometown Ticketing for a digital ticketing and event management platform as presented. B. The superintendent recommends approval of the agreement with Agile, Agile Sports. Is it? Oh, okay. there's A-G-I-L-E Sports Technologies Incorporated DBA huddle as presented. And C is recommended that the Board of Education approve agreements and contracts items A and B. Do I have a motion? I move for the approval of agreements and contracts items A and B. Um, a question. The huddle uh, that's the ability of people to visualize games and activities online, correct? Correct. So that, that's one component component of the huddle. Huddle is really, it's, uh, I almost want to say it's almost a nationally recognized program that um, high schools use in terms of uh, keeping statistics. They do the film reviews. Um, coaches were required as part of Ohio Act. Ohio High School Athletic Association be able to share films, and this is how coaches share films from one school to another school. Um, it's also the mechanism that we use for um, college recruiters for parts of games that the um, things are clipped out um, in terms of that. And then huddle, yes. So this year um, we're adding um, baseball. We're in the process of doing the cameras of baseball, softball field, and then we'll have a line um, for volleyball as well. So we've been doing huddle for a number of years. Um, Football, basketball, I mean, all the, we've, they've done wrestling, I mean, it's, it's I'm not going to test, the quality is good, because my grandson, seven years ago, we, we watched on Huddle, and it's very nice, good quality. Do we have a second? Do we have a second, and then we'll go back and talk I'll about home town, town ticketing. Okay, so. Hometown Ticketing used to be the name Ticket Spicket, so that's the that's the uh, Just online, purchasing. online purchasing that GWAC uses, you know, in terms of that. And a reminder, we still take cash, too, so. <laughs> we, did, we always take. Yeah, we always did take cash, so. All right. <laughs> so we did have a 
have a first by Mr. Nassler and a second by Mrs. Skinner. Yep. Yes. And then roll call, please. Mr. Hansler? Yes. Mr. Daphne? Yes. Mrs. Skinner? Yes. Mrs. Meese? Yes. Okay, we'll move on to our financial agenda items. A is recommended by the treasurer CFO approval of the following total amount from all sources available for expenditures from each fund set up in the tax budget with the balances that exist at the end of the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2024. B is recommended by the treasurer CFO to approve the fiscal year 24 amended permanent appropriations as presented. C is recommended that the Board of Education approve the fiscal year 25-018 and 200 budget and purposes statements as presented. And D it is recommended that the Board of Education approve financial items A through C. Um, we can go ahead and make the motion and then talk about it. Um, do I have a motion? Yeah, I will. Uh Make a motion for the approval of the financial items A, Alpha, through C, Charlie. Second. Okay, so first by Mr. Amsler and a second by Mrs. Getter. And uh, Mr. Levins will speak. So the first item is just saying here was what our ending cash balance was June 30th. And given what we anticipate to have in revenues, this is the total amount of money that we, are, that we have available to us for budget. Um, Item B is budget itself, those are the appropriations. And then item C, uh, a couple years ago, I think, they changed the requirements where the 018 and the 200 fund had to have budget and purpose statements approved by the board before they could be spent. And so that's what those are. Okay. Any questions? All right, roll call, please. Mr. Dapper? Yes. Mrs. Getter? Yes. Mrs. Meese? Yes. Mr. Ramsey? Yes. All right, next we move on to acceptance of donations. It is recommended that the Board of Education accept the following list of donations. All monies will be used through each school's 018 account unless indicated otherwise. $2,500 from the Minusburg Rotary Club to the Minusburg City School District Athletic Depart Department towards the purchase of gators. Wow, we've had a lot of money go towards gators. <laughs> That's awesome. This, is the, uh, <clears throat> this one is the final payment for the purchase. So once we approve it tonight, I've been working with Nicole and Justin's going to work its magic tomorrow and move it into the athletic account so we can get them ordered uh, for the fall. So it's two new gators, um, almost $22,000 in donations. So we, we were very grateful um, for them. And we make them last a long time. We've, we've milked them all along way, but now we're to the point where we're spending too much. Yeah. So we're, we're very grateful for the donations. Do I have a motion? I move for the acceptance of donations. Second. So first by Mr. Daffler, a second by Mrs. Getter. Right. Roll call, please. Mrs. Getter? Yes. Mrs. Yes. Yes. Mr. Amsler? Yes. Mr. Daffler? Yes. Okay, next we move on to reports, and I don't believe we have a report from Molly Williams. Our, uh, Miami Valley Career Technology Center report. Um, and then B, legislative liaison, Jason Mallory, he's not here. Uh, does anybody have a report to read from him? Okay. Uh, and then we don't see student achievement liaison, Mr. Amsler, no report, right? Uh, no students in session? <laughs> no. Okay. And then I do believe we have a report from Mrs. Getter from the Montgomery County Drug Free Coalition. Yes, the Montgomery County Drug Free Coalition meets year round. We had a meeting this afternoon on Zoom and um, some exciting things. I love this committee because it's um, a mixture of law enforcement 
people who are working with people in recovery. Uh, it just, it's just very interesting. I'm learning a lot. I didn't know. Um, there are some things, and I'm sorry if I can't speak to all of them and give you details, but there's an Operation Bridge Day, which is for recovering addicts. And what happens is um, there are people who help recovering addicts that leave information on people's doors in Montgomery County, giving them information that they might need um, if they are struggling. The, there's going to be a blitz, and they did not give a date, but that means that they're going to be checking on you know, DUIs and drugs and that type of thing. Um, and they usually base these blitzes on the stats in the Montgomery County, like arrests, that type of thing, and also community complaints. So if people have called and said, I think there's a drug house, you know, or people are using drugs in my area or whatever, then they take that into consideration. There are three um, important dates that are happening in Montgomery County, Dayton area. One is OD Awareness Day. It's going to be at the Levitt Pavilion downtown on August 14th. They're going to have a live DJ, free meals, free t-shirts, free kids games. There'll be somebody there for treatment prevention and reduction assistance. There'll be a mobile health care clinic. And there'll be an attorney there to help people with SSI application. There's also going to be a rally, the FOA, which is Families of Addicts. And it's similar to the OD Awareness Day, but it's August the 25th. It's going to be at the Courthouse Square in Dayton. And then there's going to be a fundraiser on September 19th. And it's going to be a comedy club with raffles. And, um, and it's free. So I just thought this is, these things are very important and they're awesome. And that, that they are available to our community at no charge. And that's and we will have another meeting then in two months. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Geiger. All right. Um, Mr. Jackler, we don't have any district news and information. Nope. So we'll move on to our roundtable comments. And why don't we start with Madison? Um, I just want to start off again to uh, re-congratulate Ms. House. Ms. House, we're going to miss you very much, um, and we do hope to see you in the school. Um, I am very excited to dig deeper into the sub pay as well. I think, um, uh, like we've all said, this is a very good um, topic of conversation. Um, and finally, I want to thank the Miami Star Rotary Club for the proud donation um, for the Gators. They really help um, with sports med. They help transporting um, some of our equipment. So, thank you. Um, ditto on everything Madison said. Um, congratulations to Mrs. House. Um, I wish you well in the next chapter of this life. Um, and I think the sub thing is really good that we're discussing that. It's really important too. And um, thank you to the Rotary Club. I don't want to sound like a broken record, so I'm just going <laughs> to ditto to everything they just said. Um, I'll be uh, very interested to come to the work session meeting in August because I think that's a viable information for the district and uh, of course thank you to the donations to the Rotary Club. I'm an officer in the Interact Club and we work very closely with the Rotary Club and so it's just great watching them give back to the district. So by the time we, not to be Debbie Downer here, by the time we have our next board meeting uh, we'll be back into session. So there's uh, lots of happening between now and then. So. Um, I encourage parents to um, check out the website, um, open houses coming up, um, all that fun stuff. We talked about bus routes, so we're just kind of fine-tuning um, some of those um, bus stops, so those will be out there, and we've already talked about the nice new lookup uh, for the buses in terms of that. Um, I just a reminder parents to address changes, email, email changes, phone number changes, that's always really important to keep um, the district updated. Um, and then also, too, if you haven't signed up for notifications through um, Thrillshare, please make sure you do that. Um, it's, a, it's a really good way to, to keep up on those. So. And then also, too, um, if you know of um, kiddos in your neighborhood that might be of the kindergarten age, 
please make sure you, you remind them that we don't start to we don't we start way before Labor Day <laughs> instead of after Labor Day. So that just kind of really helps us with class sizes and counts. And um, good luck to all the far, uh, all the fall seasons coming up, the uh, sports and all that. They'll be uh, kicking off very soon. So. Thursday. I'm going to let Heather know. Wrote it down. It's official. Thank you, Beth and Letitia, for coming this evening. Good to see you. Officer Coxie, always a pleasure. Thank you. Um, I, I, kind of jumping on, Mr. Holman, online registration. So encourage those neighbors, just jump on our website, click on online registration. For our families, we have final forms. Make sure you update all your um, phone numbers, addresses, and final forms so we have the right bus stops. Um, August 12th is open house, correct? That's Monday, August 12th. Um, and I think we'll list the times on our website and send out some messages through Thrillshare. And um, something fun, the summer event, is our Miamisburg High School Alumni Association. I think they've been in operation now for 135 years. Uh, they're hosting their annual golf outing next Friday. So students, if you know some golfers, get a team together. Uh, Pipestone, uh, register online. Um, so uh, the shotgun start is at 8 o'clock at Pipestone and still taking teams of four for golfing. I think it's $80 a person. I think that's a steal. I'm not a golfer, but I've heard that's a steal. Uh, there'll be fun prizes, lunch at TJ Chumps afterwards, and the Alumni Association gives 95% of that money back to the school. So it's a great organization and it's fun. I help I'm on the planning committee, so I help them. But they had a meeting today, so I had to come to the board meeting instead. So I have a follow-up meeting of my to-do list tomorrow. So I'll let them know I announced it on television that we have a golf <laughs> outing next Friday, 8 a.m. at Pipeson. So, um, and uh, we're looking forward to school, obviously, starting August 13th. Uh, it's our staggered start. So our elementary students will be in attendance. Um, our sixth grade and ninth grade will be in attendance that day. And then we have everyone um, to school on August 14th, except our preschool. And they don't start until the 19th of August. So uh, I think our board meeting is um, the 18th. So by the time we meet again, we'll have a back to school update. So very exciting. Lots of information on the bus stops. When we have that information, we'll send that out to parents so they know how to check to where the bus stop information is as well. So, but I don't, I don't foresee that coming until August. Thank you. Yeah, just to remind, um, you know, the call center office, if there's some sort of glitch, and instead of, you know, getting on social media, call, they can still solve your problems. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank Brenda Hebert on behalf of the board for all the work that she helped our board with uh, the business audit role. She sends out letters. Um, she really helps with that whole process. And um, I just wanted to thank everyone involved in making this in-house boardroom so beautiful. Um, I know Dr. Blessing and Mrs. Uh, Hibbard went down to Waynesville and they saw this new arrangement, so we thought we would try it out. Um, but it's just beautiful, the carpet, the curtains, everything. I'm just delighted and thanks for all your hard work. I know Mr. Huntman, Dr. Blessing, Mrs. Hibbard and all the, the workers. I think, Tim, your kid, your sons were down here working the other day. And yeah, so thanks for everyone who participated in making this so beautiful. Yeah, enjoy your last three weeks off, teachers and all staff, bus drivers, everyone. A long three weeks, right? <laughs> yeah. Just want to say thank you to everybody for the uh, kindness and the grace and the guidance that you know everybody showed me while I was here, and it was uh, a very good experience. And like I said last month, I feel confident that we'll be happy with who's coming in. And uh, yeah, thanks. Oh, can I? I'm so sorry, Justin. I just wanted to thank you. I, you are one of the nicest persons. You always got back to me immediately. You know. I wish you were staying. Uh, I wish you best of luck. 
you're just a wonderful person. Your, your mom raised a great son. Sorry, I, I just wasn't thinking of dates and times and, yeah. Well, I won't be that nice. Thanks for your short list and hair in my least for me. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Uh, no, I, I, I've uh, created a good relationship with you. You've done a great job, and I'm glad we were able to help you out. And I hope you do well and have great success. Um, enjoy the rest of the summer. See everybody next month. I've got a couple things. Um, Mr. Freeze, I don't know if you can answer me this now or wait till later. When we hit our buttons, and I've always wondered this and I keep forgetting to ask you, when we hit our buttons, is that coming across? It's back? just, it for the microphone? Yes. It, it hits it in, no, I don't hear the click. Is that what you're asking me? Yes. No, I don't hear that. Okay, so that, that annoying sound back and forth all all yeah. the time, but it's not. I don't hear that. Okay, no. It's not on the TV. Mm. Okay. It's just me. <laughs> All right. Uh, working outside in again, uh, Miss House, congratulations on your retirement. I know the times that I've been in the school, um, walking down the hall, you've always had a smile on your face. Uh, you do as much for our students and for our school district outside the, the classroom as you do inside. And it's a testament that all three of our students here tonight congratulated you. So you make an impact. And as a coach and as a teacher, that's all you can ask is make, can make an impact on a child's life. And you've done that, so congratulations. Um, speaking of the kids, uh, I just came back from Alaska. <clears throat> and um, while I was gone, the last thing I wanted to have was conversations about school. However, when I was in the laundry room on the ship, we were getting ready to dock. Um, a lady asked me what I did, and I told her I worked for the fire department, and I was on the school board. And she lit up like a Christmas tree. And she was from Nebraska. And so we had a conversation while we were folding laundry and everything. And she said, what do you do different in Ohio that we don't do in Nebraska? So we talked about a little bit of everything finances and uh, she asked me about the size of the school da, 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 da. and I said the one thing that we have done differently over the last couple of years that I think has made an impact not only for our school board members but our I said our students I said we have implemented uh, and we got the idea that other school districts have done as putting students on our board so to speak and I said I think they get just as much out of it as we get out of it and uh, so she took down my name she took down my number um, and I told her I, I said listen I said we're here for the students uh, all the decisions that we make uh, not only for the staff but we're here to educate kids and I said if we can impact kids and she loved the idea um, she's like same size school district. So I thought it was, it's interesting when you go, no matter where you go in the United States. And I was in Alaska and ironically, I didn't take a picture of it. We were on a bus and there was a big bus sitting on the corner and it said, bus drivers needed. And I've seen it, <laughs> I've seen it in Arizona. So the problems, this, this not state of Ohio, whether it's funding, whether it's teachers, it's lower 48, it's Alaska, it's Hawaii, it's, so this, every school district has the same issues. It's not just Minersburg, Ohio, or this region. So I just thought uh, that was interesting. Um, so if I get a call from her and I can't enter it, then I'm going to forward it on to, to you guys as well to, Chris, I think that was catch a can that you saw the bus. We were in Alaska too, and I didn't have my camera out fast enough to take a picture yes. of. Yes. It was catch a can right off the dock, so just yeah. I wasn't fast enough to get the picture, but yeah, yeah. 
Go get the ideas, ladies. And the last thing I have, um, Justin, thank you. Uh, uh, I wish you all the best of luck at Kettering. Um, you've been nothing but polite. You've been nothing but generous. Um, you're a friend inside the school district. You're a friend outside the school district. Um, so don't hesitate not to reach out once you're gone for lunch, breakfast, whatever the case may be. Got a question about something? Don't hesitate to ask. You you always have a place here, uh, and you're only a phone call away. So thank you for all your service to Mindsburg City Schools, and I wish you the best moving forward. He has to come to work tomorrow. Yeah. 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 No, we got big plans for him for a couple weeks. No, no. So that's all I got. So thank you. Well, I'd like to congratulate Chris as well. Um, I knew Chris when she was in the healthcare realm, <laughs> since I've been in healthcare forever. Um, so I'm so, so happy for you, Doug, and I wish you the best. And I do hope that you will consider substituting when you have time. Um, also, I would like to say farewell to Justin and good luck in your new position. I've really enjoyed working with you from the very first month that I was appointed to the school board before I was elected to the school board. You were so helpful to me. So I, I just really appreciated working with you, and I will miss you. And then uh, I just can't, but I'm overwhelmed by all the donations for the Gators. So enough said on that. And then I want to thank the student members for being here on their vacation, that they took the time to come. And then I'm so excited about the new elementary programming year. I can't wait for the kids uh, to start in their new schools if they're trying out a new school and to hear what all they have to say about the new school. I've got a neighbor boy and he gets to be at Mound for one more year, but he was telling me all about the elementary programming and he is in third grade. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't wait for that to start. Mrs. Williams is here, so do you have a report for us? Uh, I do, but I didn't want to keep you, because I was going to say hi and bye. But, you know, I, it's really short because it's less than like summer, so it is, um, we had a board retreat, and that was interesting because they fed us breakfast, it was awesome. But um, we met to discuss, like, the year end and the financials, and, and they tied it up with a neat bow for us, and, and I have a report of that and they closed the books on that. They did say that 80% of their budget was spent on salaries and benefits, which I thought was amazing, um, and that health insurance had gone up 5.5%, so I'm sure you guys are seeing those reflections as well. Uh, they had 6.8 less percent in their general fund at the end of the year, and this is where I'm learning about the school systems, which you guys have to deal with it, because the state said in May, oh, by the way, we're not going to pay for any of your certifications for your students, which was $200,000. And the state just said, peace out. So that's the things that you guys all have to deal with that I'm not so sure the general public knows. And I said, well, wait, wait, wait. What do, you, what do you mean? They can't do that. And he goes, oh, yeah, they do it all the time. So I am learning so much from here and there and everything. So it, it was, it was um, but it wound up to be a great year for CTC. Um, I thought this was very interesting, and I would love to compare it to Miamisburg. Their top three discipline problems were disruption. They had 152 incidents. Truancy, 80 incidents. And use or slash possession, 45. And that was it for the entire year. And they only had 334 incidents for the year for all the students they had. And I was like, that's incredible. I mean, that seems very low to me. I was like, I think I got more trouble than that. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, that's probably not. Um, so, so it was really fun to see them round up a year, and then our meeting was just this Tuesday because they pushed it off a week because of the retreat. So it's just been school board week for me. Um, but it was extremely short. I do have the financials for you. They're finishing up their new hires. They're finishing up just tying everything together from last year to get ready for this year. And their first day of school is August 12th for juniors and August 13th for seniors. So. It'll be really cool. They are full. They only have one program that is not full or on the waiting list. And they had to turn away 300 students, which is not great, but at the same time great, because it means they're really needed. 
Um, and they said they have 36 satellites right now, and it's just amazing how popular and how full. And they just announced they're gonna add four more programs to one school system. So by the end of next year, they'll have 40. So that's pretty, pretty cool. So, um, so I will turn this in, and I'm sorry I got here soon as I could, but congratulations to you, and I, hope, I wish you the best. I'm sure you will be missed. And you've got three weeks, you guys have to enjoy it. So. <laughs> Woohoo! But that's it. We were told just when I'm saying goodbye, so. <laughs> <laughs> we refused. They so. know where you are, that's yeah, going right. to be the problem. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 I know it's a We always stay in contact yeah. with each other, and yeah. it's, it's we're all the same. It's never goodbye, it's just we'll see you in a bit. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so. Just to like branch off of things Getter said, you know, Myers first taking a new uh, chance with this elementary breaking up thing. And I don't know if people watching you know this, we do a lot with the high school and middle school, especially because, you know, they're really close together and uh, we can better connect with kids because they're kids closer to our age. But with elementary, I thought everyone here should know that, like, we are branching out to the elementary school buildings. So we have started taking rounds with uh, elementary school principals and now, just to let the board know, we are we have we have plans in the making to be more inclusive with even the little kids, just because every opinion and perspective should matter here. So I just thought I'd add that in here, and then of course we just board us. You know, we only know you as our CFO and treasurer. So uh, yeah, just, just that. So goodbye. And, uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>